when I uh, visited progress by, uh, from time to time and uh, researched more and more about Bitcoin and uh, later other cryptocurrencies, also known as altcoin or uh, altcoins or shitcoins, uh, I met many people who didn't research as much as I did, and they asked questions. You know those questions like, do you think the value go, will go up or down? Or should I buy Monero or, Z or Zcash? Or which currency is the most secure? Or did you buy any ICO? And many other questions. But what I found the most uh, interesting was that people really didn't know the differences between Bitcoin, Zcash, and Monero, and people were, for example, falsely assuming that Bitcoin is anonymous and uh, that Zcash is perfect or whatever. So I decided to make a talk about it to teach people what, uh, go, uh, what, uh, what's going on. And you are right now at this talk, so welcome here. First, let's look a little, little bit at the history. When mysterious guy called Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin, many people thought that Bitcoin is anonymous. But quite quickly, they found out that it's not actually accurate because there are some faults in anonymity of Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto himself wrote in his white paper, he put there this diagram, he compared traditional privacy model, that means the model of fiat money, where identities are connected to transactions, which are managed by trusted parties, and those parties uh, prevent public from accessing this information. However, in Bitcoin, it was not possible to do this thing because uh, it had to be transparent, auditable. So ev everyone would believe that it does what it says it does. And so uh, transactions had to be public. So Satoshi invented the new privacy model where identities are not connected to transactions, and therefore transactions can be public. So the idea was to uh, simply tie identity to uh, keeper, but uh, no one knows who owns the, the public key or private key. They don't know uh, who owns the address they just see some number, but don't have idea who is behind the number. And of course, uh, as I said, it has some faults, and Satoshi himself uh, admitted that it's not perfect. So let's look at how it works. This is uh, like example of a Bitcoin transaction or most other altcoins have very similar uh, transactions. We have so-called inputs, which are references to previous transactions. So if I want to send coins somewhere, I have to specify uh, which coins I'm spending. And we have outputs, which is uh, my desired uh, state of ha how the money should be divided. So, could you try to guess which of the outputs is more likely to be the, the value I'm trying to spend? Well, many could guess that this one, because it's surrounded and this looks random. So, uh, that's because people usually like rounded numbers and they, they send rounded transactions. And so anyone who looks at such transaction can guess that probably this is the value I'm transferring and this is uh, going to my uh, return address. So, and uh, there is also a fee 
which isn't uh, explicitly mentioned. That's why I put different arrow here. But it's it can be calculated as a uh, by subtracting some of uh, inputs and uh, s uh, some of outputs. Well, uh, of course, the other way around, this minus this. So th this is one problem. And for example, if you look at blockchain info, this is one of the uh, algorithms they use to guess uh, how much money was transferred. And of course, if you try hard, you can fool it. Now, uh, another problem is called address reuse. And the idea is that if one person uses the same address in two different transactions, like this, these transactions look like absolutely not connected. But if you look at the addresses, they are the same. So you can identify uh, that the, uh, the person that spent this and this is most probably uh, the same person. It's even more probable than uh, assuming that these uh, inputs belong to the same person. Because usually when one sends the transaction, he combines his inputs, and if there are different addresses, then anybody who sees the blockchain he, uh, learns that probably he he just combined these inputs into outputs. Well, this assumption uh, may be incorrect. Sometimes it maybe isn't this uh, situation. Maybe the person is doing coin join, which is technique to disguise uh, yourself in Bitcoin. And I assume, and Pamela agrees, that probably in uh, many like nice countries with not uh, so much corrupt uh, system, uh, you couldn't be convicted by uh, uh, by uh, chain analysis alone, by just by you know uh, someone looking at this, but uh, the problem is that this can help prosecutors to find uh, find their identity and find some other evidence, and also if you uh, I like want to be perfectly safe against government, the sad reality is if they want to get you, you they will get you. So. <laughs> Well, because of these problems, there uh, was a crypto node protocol created, which tried to address these problems. And the most famous uh, or maybe popular implementation of this protocol is called Monero. Monero addresses these two concerns uh, by separate ways. Firstly, uh, to address the, uh, other, uh, address reuse, they make something that's called stealth address. The special address that isn't actually used for receiving, but the sender must generate a new address from this address and send the money to that address. And the thing is that this is uh, this. Uh, connection isn't visible in the blockchain. And also, if you have like two transactions or uh, using the same receiving address, but the generated addresses are different, and so nobody can see that they are somehow related. This is very important, and it's quite user-friendly. Funnily enough, uh, still addresses are possible in Bitcoin. It's possible today, the technology is there. I'm not exactly sure why uh, they didn't take off. I guess that it may be because anyone who wants to use them must scan the whole blockchain. Uh, and that also very often means uh, run a full node. The an another thing in Monero is called ring signatures. Ring signatures uh, allow you to sign any input to transaction as one of n participants. So 
<laughs> if I want to create a transaction, I don't refer just my uh, input, but I find the, uh, like four other random inputs in the Monero blockchain uh, with, with the same value and combine them, creating a special signature that tells anyone that I'm one of these, but doesn't tell which one of them I am. And uh, so th this is also prior to recent implementation of uh, confidential transactions, which hide also uh, output. But this is just for simplicity. Yeah, uh, obvious disclaimer for any technical guys here. This talk is uh, meant for non-technical guys, so please don't uh, throw rocks at me for being inaccurate. Uh, this is how this transaction looks like in the Monero blockchain. You, you see only there is like several inputs, uh, which and uh, only one of them was actually used, and there is output. Of course, there is uh, po it is possible to split them and uh, make like several groups of them. But for simplicity, I picked just one. And after a recent uh, upgrade to Monero, the amount is hidden too. And this uh, technology is called confidential TX transactions, and I won't uh, explain how it works because it's uh, a little bit of math and or maybe higher math and uh, there is not much time for that but uh, if you want to learn it uh, I suggest to google this uh, term and I guess you will find it then uh, also another currency that try to uh, solve the anonymity problem is Zcash. Zcash tried different approach. They created uh, something that's called zero knowledge proofs. Uh, so you can prove that uh, your transaction is valid without revealing any details of the transactions. Now, anyone knows what this is? Does this help? for anyone else. <laughs> well, this is probably the best uh, article on uh, Zcash and uh, some related stuff I have ever read. I mean, it's not like it explains completely everything, but it's best like it's very entertaining and informative and and very long, and I really suggest everyone to uh, to study it. It's also very skeptical because of this guy who is very skeptical, and uh, so this may be like good uh, warning sign for you. If you want to buy Zcash, you definitely should read this first, just in case. You know, I may be too paranoid, but just in case, read it. Uh, it's definitely worth it. And there is a, uh, the reason behind this article is that there was something called uh, ceremony because the Zcash cannot work without uh, having knowledge of uh, some numbers that must be publicly known and must have certain mathematical properties. And the only way to generate those numbers is um, calculate them from another number, which is random, but there is a catch that anyone who knows this random number can inflate the currency. So, in order to prevent such event and make the currency trustless, uh, the authors of Zcash decided to do so-called ceremony. So, they divided the secret also called as toxic waste, into several pieces and uh, like uh, honorable members of cri cryptocurrency community uh, bought new computers and ran some calculations on them and communicated with other computers uh, over air gap uh, using DVDs uh, that was sent over network uh, to other computers uh, and this lasted three days 
And the, the whole uh, Cypherpunk Desert Bus article is about how Peter Todd did it uh, in, uh, from his point of view. This is a nice picture that shows that he, if he didn't lie, he really tried very hard because he, he burned the memories, uh, error aims. Uh, so uh, hopefully that information is destroyed. The good thing about this ceremony is that it needs just single person who is honest, and not just honest, but capable of defending himself against all other potential attackers uh, who would like to compromise him, not just uh, you know the other participants of uh, of the ceremony, but uh, if the ceremony, even if they are all honest, they have to defend against anyone else who is dishonest and wants to attack this ceremony. So, assuming Peter Todd is honest, for example, Peter Todd, uh, then uh, he did a really good job. At, at destroying the, the toxic waste, and but you know you must trust uh, at least one of those six people. So that's also the catch. Uh, some people consider it insecure. Some people consider it secure. Make your own mind. So how transactions uh, in zcash look like? Well, there are also classical unshielded transactions, just like in Bitcoin. They basically cloned uh, most of the Bitcoin, which is nice because they reused a lot of code. But they added these shielded transactions. And shielded transactions uh, works that you take your input or several inputs and make those coins disappear. And later, you wait some time. Uh, I uh, recommend not doing the next operation in the next block. And after some time, you make those coins reappear, maybe even divided into several input or outputs, etc. Et et and uh, the way you uh, make them reappear, you have proof that these coins were uh, uh, hidden before in blockchain and the uh, amount is correct uh, and everything is valid. But this proof doesn't, that doesn't disclose the connection between this and this. So uh, the nice thing about it is uh, the more people uh, like hide their coins and make them reappear, the uh, bigger the anonymity set, which means that the more number of people there are, the more number you can accuse of, uh, you know, sending those those money. And if there are like thousands of people, then you can realistically uh, find out who the, who they are. So the another catch of Zcash is that transaction size is quite big. This is public transaction size, and this is uh, shielded. So this is like 20 kilobytes, and this is 300 bytes. Uh, this is memory usage while signing. Uh, Three gigabytes versus uh, something. I, I didn't found exact number, but I know that Trezor can do it, and Trezor has the 128 kilobytes of RAM, so uh, so it's 128 or, or less. But if you look at it, you can see this. So so that's another problem. And uh, the problem is signing time. You can sign the unshielded transactions in very short time. But the shoot it takes 40 seconds, which may not be that bad. But if you wanted to like do batch processing of them or whatever, uh, that could be an issue. And you know it's not very user friendly. So what I wanted to say by this is that this is a chart of transactions. These are shielded transactions with hidden information, and these are unshielded. What's interesting is that this doesn't look like it would rise uh, the same way this rises. 
And actually, if you look very carefully, this looks like this is lower and this is higher. So let's look at this. I I was curious whether I, I see correctly or should I get new glasses. So I decided to select this part and cut it away and zoom it. And now you can see that really this is a little bit lower. So the thing is that these transactions has have downward trend because of pro highly probably because of the huge cost. It's not really easy and convenient to to make them. So this is this is not like the problem of Zcash itself. It's I see it more like the problem of Zcash users who are unwilling to pay for the privacy, which uh, kind of also makes the whole thing. Uh, you know, like, what's the point if those people who buy it don't care about privacy? This doesn't make much sense. But not to, uh, you know, I don't want to say that Zcash is bad or whatever. I believe it's a very good mixer. And uh, they plan to improve these uh, parameters. And they will have to upgrade cryptography, which will probably involve some sort of hard fork. Maybe soft fork if they work hard. And... Uh, this should over the uh, the cost. So uh, in these presentations, I try to you know like tell the current state of things, but also you know if it's not like that, uh, Zcash will always be bad or whatever. Uh, it's more about uh, current state and that fu future may be more interesting and more uh, nicer towards Zcash. And also, there is this thing called Nullifier in Zcash. There, in Monero, there is uh, practically the same thing uh, from the purpose of it. Not like uh, in math, it differs, but uh, but it's the same purpose. And the Nullifier, or in Monero, it's called uh, public key image is something that you have to disclose every time you want to reveal your hidden coins or make any uh, other uh, shieldy transaction. And this nullifier makes sure that you don't double spend. Because if nobody can see which coins you spend, nobody can know whether you did spend them or not. But uh, nullifier is made in such a way that if you attempt to double spend, you would have to reveal the same nullifier. So everyone would see that the same nullifier was, was used before. But that makes a problem, because if everyone has to check whether this nullifier was seen before, he has to remember that that uh, nullifier existed. And to remember this, uh, they have to really store it somewhere in hard drive or whatever. And this uh, makes a problem for both Monero and Zcash, is that those data never can be pruned, never erased. They have to be in the blockchain forever. And so th this uh, makes a problem with scalability, uh, because th th as time progresses, it will always increase. While if you compare, for example, Bitcoin, the if you say like I don't need um, transact uh, data from blockchain older than I don't know one year, you can just discard the data and it will work perfectly fine. You can do this with uh, Monero or Zcash. And yeah, uh, I wanted to uh, also mention the other future improvements possible in Bitcoin. Uh, because if I say about f possible future improvement of Zcash, I should also mention possible improvement in, Z in Bitcoin. And there are Lightning Network, uh, which uh, is in development. And the interesting thing about Lightning Network is that it makes privacy more easy because it puts transactions off chain not just like absolutely perfect but very easy uh, and it also makes transactions faster cheaper uh, and uh, in some circumstances also more secure especially if you you know buy things at a shop and don't want to wait one hour for transactions to co confirm the lightning network can uh, provide you 
the way to not have to wait, but still have very, very good uh, assurance that uh, you won't be scammed. So that's the thing. So to uh, summarize it, Bitcoin is highly scalable compared to others. Uh, it's mixable. That means that it's not absolutely bad at uh, privacy, but if you try hard, you can mix it. Uh, Lightning Network should improve the privacy, or, and there is also another project, maybe even more crazy uh, than Lightning Network and other things. It's called Mimble Limbo, and there are some people implementing it. Uh, uh, the idea is to make a blockchain which consists of only one trans one very huge coin join transaction in each block and so the uh, uh, the thing is that to make coin join in bitcoin the participants have to cooperate but in mimble wimble they, they don't have to so anyone can take your transaction and mix it with him and nobody else knows uh, where those money comes uh, come from and where they go uh, it also hides amount and it's also even more scalable than Bitcoin, because if you if you discard all data in Bitcoin, then you can't prove to a uh, to new person who didn't have this data before that the transaction uh, the blockchain is valid, because he would have to verify also the discarded data. But uh, what's interesting in Mimbo Wimbo is that uh, you need to store just a little bit of data. Uh, and uh, discard a huge portion of the data. And you can then uh, prove to anyone that the transaction, the all transactions were valid uh, anyway. So, so this is more scalable. The downside is it doesn't support Bitcoin script or any kind of script. Uh, there are some researches that some people try to you know find out if there is possible like somehow implement uh, multi sig or some other features and there there is a implementation of this called green uh it's on github they they write it in my favorite language rust so i'm very excited about this and i follow, follow this github and they work at it uh, hard so there is a lot of issues, opened, closed, merges, pull requests, whatever. So yes, it seems nice. And Monero uh, does also, the mixing in Monero is mandatory. That means uh, all transactions, except the mining ones, uh, have to have at least uh, four other inputs, if I remember correctly the number. Uh, so this, the one, uh, reason for this is that it fixes one vulnerability that if someone made a non-mixing transaction and another one tried to mix transaction with his transaction, it would actually review also the other transaction. So uh, this is one, uh, one reason. And uh, another reason is that such mandatory mixing gives you possible deniability. So no one can say, hey, you mixed your transaction because you are planning to do something bad. You can say, well, I mixed it because I had to, or else it wouldn't work. And another reason is the fact that uh, if you if you mix with more outputs or inputs, uh, you get uh, higher anonymity, and if you uh, make transaction, you provide also anonymity for all those inputs that you mixed with. So people uh, uh, may help each other to anonymize the transaction. <laughs> Monero doesn't consume that much resources during signing, as Zikesh does. Also, uh, as far as I remember correctly, I think Zikesh had like one gigabyte private key, which is um, which may be problematic for devices like Trezor or whatever, uh, and uh, other issues. So Monero doesn't have this problem. And um, uh, recently, from I think beginning of this year, Monero also hides an amount. So I think the difference is not that 
too huge uh, in privacy, but I may be wrong, so ch check it yourself. Don't trust verify, you know. Uh, Zcash may be the most private. Uh, it may be very good mixer. You know, you can always buy Monero for Bitcoin, then Zcash for Monero, and Zcash and something else for Zcash, and uh, do a little bit more hoops. And I believe that nobody would be capable of uh, tracing you back with this scheme. Uh, also, one thing in Zcash is that it uses experimental cryptography, which isn't like well tested uh, for many years or whatever. So. Uh, we hope that it works, but you know um, there wasn't as much time to prove it as it was with uh, with those other cryptography technologies. And uh, you know, you must trust at least one of the six people, or or all six of them, or whatever. And there is also uh, this thing, R3 reports. If you Google R3 reports and this, or Bitcoin, Monero, Zcash, or whatever, you will find uh, this document. It's PDF, and it's a nice document that uh, is really, its content is much like the content of this talk. Uh, maybe a little bit biased because this guy is the one who created Zcash, so be careful about blind trusting this document. And uh, you can delve into the details of cryptography and other other things. So this is uh, I advise you to to check it out if you want to you know like study it into detail. And these are my contact details. Of course, PGP key. Make sure you you have physical photo of it, so nobody can change it. This is uh, euro of this presentation of slides, and you can find me on Twitter, ready the GitHub under this handle. And also my email address is my name uh, separated with dot. Uh, at Gmail. Oops. Okay. That's it. Do you have any questions? Somebody? Hi, thank for, thanks for the talk. Uh, so as far as I'm aware, the third cryptocurrency that tries to kind of address the privacy problem is Dash. So, um, do you have any ideas on how that compares with Monero and Zcash? Well, I was thinking to put the uh, Dash into this talk, but uh, I decided to do it uh, simple in the first place. But since you asked, uh, Dash is basically a glorified coin join. Well, it's like it's almost the same as Bitcoin, but the thing is that you must mix transactions uh, using some trusted nodes, let's say, and, and they are they are called master nodes, and, and uh, they what they do is basically coin join. So really, Dash is basically qualified coin join, coin join. That's uh, one issue, and uh, there is one thing that uh, makes me uh, suspicious about Dash, is that when Dash was created, there was something they say it was a bug. I'm not sure about that it was a bug. And it allowed the first miners to create, I think it was two millions of Dash, which uh, was fixed. And the funny thing was that how they coordinated that uh, they, where did they start from, uh, from the beginning or they keep it there? Uh, they did it on some forum, so I don't know whether the, this forum was manipulated or wasn't, and so, so they pre basically pre-mined many coins, and that would not be a problem in itself. I mean, I don't oppose people making money on the cryptocurrency. The biggest problem is that in order to operate Masternode, you have to have uh, some amount of coins. Uh, as far as I remember, it was 1,000 uh, Dash. So if you divide 2 million Dash divided by 1,000 Dash, you get 2,000 potential nodes. So potentially, the creators or the pre first miners of Dash can uh, spawn 2,000 nodes. I guess that 
could be used for Sybil attack and for the anonymization of the uh, joins. So I personally uh, wouldn't trust Dash if I wanted to hide my money. I would certainly prefer Monero or Zcash if I wanted some trustless mixer, you know. But maybe I'm just too paranoid. Some more questions? Um, yeah, my question uh, would be, um, can you tell me a little bit more about Zcash versus Zcoin, I think? Because I haven't researched that, yeah. um, uh, and I don't know the difference. Of course. Uh, Zcoin is basically uh, previous uh, implementations. It's uh, kind of similar or in many things. Uh, as far as I know, uh, Zcash is more efficient. Am I correct? Yeah. And so that's uh, one advantage of Zcash. And I, I think there is was also some overlap of, of people who are doing them or not. No? Okay. No. Uh, but... Uh, uh, as far as I understand, it's not a fork, it's a new implementation. So, that's also Zcash is probably more popular as far as I know. I'm not certain about this one, but, uh, uh, you know, there are more people uh, asking me about Zcash than people asking me about Zcoin, so... Given that right now, basically everybody has to run a full node on their computer, and the fact that uh, Monero has uh, has things that can't be pruned from the blockchain, um, do you view that as an issue for the future in terms of scaling the network? I'm not actually sure. What's interesting about uh, having to run a full node may, is that it may be even more resistant to some political attacks. You know, what, what's happening now in Bitcoin is that uh, many people don't run full node. They have their lightning wallets. Uh, oh, sorry, not lightning, but light wallets. And so they, they don't verify all transactions. And there are uh, quite a few people who do. And this poses a, a problem because uh, when someone tries to convince people to uh, change their software, they don't have to convince as many people. Where uh, in Monero, since you basically have to run full node because you have to see every transaction, or uh, to put it in another way, uh, since you have, have to see all the transactions, uh, and they have to yeah, like from through your computer anyway. There is not not much cost to add to run full node to also validate those transactions. Uh, this may be uh, quite advantageous uh, for, for this. But also you ask about scaling, and I'm not expert on topic on uh, scaling and whatever. So I'm I'm not sure. It may be problem. It may be not. Maybe if there is some breakthrough in hardware or whatever, maybe it won't be an issue. But uh, you know, if Monero for some reason becomes the most popular cryptocurrency and everyone will want to use it, uh, then in 20 years, no one can say that, oh, let's discard past, uh, let's discard ten, uh, everything that's older than 10 years, because mm, some of the data can be discarded. So that could be an issue. And this same problem is, is with Zcash, actually. Can you give me a rough idea of how much memory it takes to store the blockchain to run a full node for each of the three right now? Or uh, oh, that's a good question. I didn't research this topic. Uh, as far as I remember, Bitcoin had something about 100 uh, gigabytes. Uh, I think it was like 140 with uh, transaction indexing. Uh, I don't remember about the other two. So 
I, I, th I think you can Google it quite easily. Any more questions, somebody? So uh, I'm curious about what you were saying with like using both Monero and Zcash like as a scheme to sort of have ultra privacy. Do you have like a specific process that you think would be good? Or like if, for example, if there was a wallet that was just Monero and Zcash and you could exchange in between the two, do you I, think I, that would be extra yeah. secure? Or? I actually didn't try it myself because I didn't ha have to yet. So so that's uh, something I, I maybe will do one day, maybe not. So I, c I can t recommend like any automated way of doing this or whatever. But what I certainly would do is for, for each transaction wait some time if I want like very good privacy. And the thing is that um, if I do the double mixing, I protect against vulnerabilities of the other coin. So if, for example, someone broke uh, some so, uh, s s something in the Zcash and somehow, uh, because it's an experimental cryptography, maybe someone could find a way to de anonymize the transaction, but there is also Monero and also the other way around. So that, that's why I think it would be it would be like better uh, if you really really have to be very safe for whatever reasons. So. Uh, thanks for a great presentation. Uh, you mentioned uh, stealth res uh, that is possible in Bitcoin, but not used. Uh, so it means that it is possible to make uh, output script that basically make uh, makes the stealth address in Bitcoin. Uh, oh. Well, it's, uh, no, uh, that uh, isn't doesn't work like that. You uh, would have to give someone special address, which is also longer. Uh, it would look like more much like the Monero address. And this person could calculate a new address for you and send the bitcoins to that address via normal process like today, you know. And he would he would also put uh, extra data in op return output of this transaction. So you uh, so the receiver could uh, check this op return uh, data and uh, calculate the new, uh, the private key from this newly generated address. And also, uh, similarly, you could also not use op return, but uh, send it directly to the receiver. Uh, and uh, so receiver would uh, calculate it. And it wouldn't even look like, uh, hey, someone is using stealth address. Mm, nobody could say that. And even if you... If you use written data, it shouldn't be distinguishable from random noise, so so nobody knows that what's it used for theoretically. So, okay, so I think we are running out of time. So that was the last question. So thank you very much once again. Thank you. Too.